Good day, students. You are welcome to another lecture episode on passive and active transport. So today we are going to be discussing about passive and active transport. And um, before we start uh, discussing, we need to understand that we are going to talk about transportation across the cell membrane. And if we remember, cell membrane is the what? The outer covering of the cell that provides uh, protection and also it serves as a, uh, as a channel for transporting materials across the cell membrane. Across the, uh, the, the cell membrane serve as a channel for transport of materials. So, and the transportation of materials uh, across the cell membrane uh, is one of the function of the cell membrane or the plasma membrane. And the cell membrane acts as a semi-permeable uh, membrane, which allows only some substance to pass through and act as a barrier for other substances. For example, uh, small hydrophobic molecules such as carbon dioxide, oxygen, and small uh, lipids dissolve in the membrane. And it can also pass through it readily because uh, these are small molecules and also lipids, small lipids molecules, they can dissolve and pass through the membrane without the help of transporters. So we are going to talk about this transportation and the mechanism of this transportation and different types uh, of the uh, transportations. So if you look at uh, some tiny molecules such as water uh, and, and also alcohol, they can slip between the phospholipids uh, bilayer and, it, it can, and they can also be transported across the membrane. So ions and most nutrient molecules, they do not move freely through the cell membrane but they are often, uh, they have transporter molecules or transporter proteins that uh, uh, transport them, either without energy or with, with the use of energy. That is, when there is energy, it means it is becoming uh, an active transport. So active transport is when the transportation takes place, but with the uh, utilization of energy, while passive transport uh, it's of course without the utilization of energy. So uh, if you look at uh, what we call uh, gradients, and these gradients are important in moving materials through the membrane, and this will involve either passively without the use of the energy from the cell or actively, which requires the energy to provide uh, by, the, uh, by the cell. So, so the transport mechanism can be either passive, as we explained, or, uh, or simple uh, diffusion, or it can be uh, facilitated. So for passive transport, we can say passive transport can be divided into two, either simple diffusion or facilitated diffusion. In simple diffusion, the molecules, uh, uh, the simple diffusion, the molecules or the, uh, substance that can be that will be transported across the membrane can be transported without the aid of any molecules so materials that can move through the membrane by the process of simple diffusion include water carbon dioxide oxygen and some lipids molecules and also as uh, uh, alcohol so in wild for facilitated diffusion uh, molecules that cannot freely move through the membrane has to pass through the membrane by the help of transporter molecules, to, which are, are proteins in nature. So transport proteins in the membrane helps in uh, carrying out passive transport in form of facilitated uh, diffusion. So this transportation uh, of course, when these protein molecules temporarily bind to the substance and they move them through the membrane. And this process is called uh, facilitated 
or passive transport. So no energy is involved in the process, and both the carrier protein and all channel proteins are involved in the what facilitated diffusion. So materials that can pass through the membrane by facilitated diffusion include glucose, amino acid, and many other small ions. The movement of water through the membrane uh, is also involved facilitated diffusion. So because the movement of water molecules through the membrane requires a specific protein that is called aquaporin. And these aquaporins are of different, different types. And these aquaporin molecules, uh, they are proteins that are in the cell membrane that helps in the water transportation of water. So aquaporins are membrane proteins that transport water by what, what we call facilitated diffusion. So for facilitated diffusion may be coupled to the movements of other molecules. So if we look at this diagram, it's trying to summarize what passive and active transport is all about. So for passive transport process, it proceeds as a diffusion from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration. So look at uh, transportation of oxygen opposed by diffusing through the membrane, transportation of sodium diffuses through the aqueous channel. And also if you look at this active transport involving the transportation of sodium and potassium, and it requires what? Energy, because it's against the concentration gradient. So it requires a sodium potassium pump, okay? To, to actually carry out the, the process. So uh, we say facilitated process may be coupled to the movement of other molecules in the same direction or opposite direction. So this brings us to discuss about what, what we call uh, co-transportation. So in co-transportation or in co-transport, the transport of one molecule depends on the sequential transfer of another molecule. Co-transport may be a symport or antiport. A symport system moves two molecules in the same direction. So symport is a type of co-transportation which it requires two molecules to be transported in the same direction. For instance, if you look at this chart, uh, we have symporter here, and this symporter protein transported transport A and B molecule in the same direction. Okay. While for antipod, if you look at uh, for, for molecules in the body or in the system that uh, pass through the membrane via symport, we have sodium glucose transporter. Okay. While for antipod system, it moves two molecules in opposite direction, which is known as also counter transport. Example, sodium potassium transporter. So an antipod, we have look at this glucose and sodium, are uh, example of what symport molecules are transported via symport and sodium potassium uh, are example of uh, antipod molecules that are transported via an antipoda protein. We also have an, another example, which is called a unipot or a unipota protein. Now a unipota protein, unipot is the system, antipod is the system, simpod is the system of transporting molecules in either uh, one direction, as in the case of unipot, one molecule is transported in one direction, and in simpod, two molecules are transported in two direction and the same direction, two molecules transported in the same direction, or antipod, two molecules is transported in what? Uh, opposite, uh, opposite what? Opposite direction. So while for the proteins that are carrying out the function of this transportation, they are called either unipota, as the case may be, or syn uh, synporta or antipota proteins. I hope you are uh, getting the, the differences. So this uh, figure summarizes the, the two or rather three uh, processes.
So now we uh, have to look at uh, examples of what we call endocytosis and uh, exocytosis. So um, for endocytosis, These are, uh, they are what we call vesicle mediated transport. And this vesicle mediated transport, a uh, transport of large substance that require, be require changes in the shape of the membrane and also diffusion of the plasma membrane to uh, form what we call a uh, vesicle. So, such changes in membrane occur throughout the lifetime of the cell, and movement of materials of uh, movement of materials of the cell involve changes of the membrane and formation of vesicles that are called exocytosis, while the movement of materials into the cell are called what we uh, term as uh, endocytosis. So materials movement of the cell involving change of the cell membrane to form what uh, vesicles we call exocytosis, while movement of materials into the cell is called what endocytosis. So materials can be transported from the cell by fusing vesicles with the plasma membrane in exocytosis. For example, insulin that is made inside the cell of the pancreas is released to the blood stream by exocytosis. While if we look at endocytosis, we can see that there are various processes, uh, endocytosis process in the cell. Examples, we have uh, what we call pinocytosis, Okay, we have also receptor mediated uh, endocytosis and also phagocytosis. So these three are the subcategories or subtypes of uh, endocytosis. We have pinocytosis, we have uh, receptor mediated endocytosis, and also we also have the phagocytosis. So in pinocytosis, we can see that solutes that are going to be transported are bind to the cell membrane. They bind to the cell membrane. From that is from the extracellular fluid. They are outside the cell. The, the cell wants to engulf and internalize those substances in the process of uh, endocytosis. Now we are explaining pinocytosis, which is an example of uh, or a type of endocytosis. So solute binds to the cell membrane and they, call, they cause what in internalization of those molecules. So cell membrane forms inward to internalize those molecules that are going to be what taken into the cell. And in, if you look at that, what's happened in one and two, then in three, the cell continues to fold until that vesicle or, uh, or pinosome is formed. Now, pinosome is now a, like a vesicle that contains the solute substance that has been internalized by the cell. So both ends of the fold meet and produce what we call the the pinosome. Okay. So for receptor mediated endocytosis, we have the extracellular fluid outside the cell, and you have the cell membrane contact with the extracellular fluid, and you have the internal cellular environment. So this involves some receptor molecules that are on the surface of the cell membrane are now attaching the molecules that are going to be uh, endocytosed inside the cell 
will now attach themselves to the what receptor molecules. Now, when this receptor molecules now attach to the uh, 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 molecules that are going to be internalized, have internalization of the uh, molecules and the plasma membrane now is what folded inside to form what we call the coated vesicle. So this, it involves receptors on the surface of the membrane to attach where the molecules now attach themselves. So that is why it's called receptor mediated endocytosis. Well, for phagocytosis, you have what we call uh, processes that occurs. You have the entrapment. For instance, we are taking example like food particle now. You have entrapment now, the cell membrane now entrap the, the particle and you have formation of food vacuole. And after the food vacuole is being formed, you have your fission with lysosomes because in the cell you have lysosomes. You remember lysosomes are digestive, uh, they are what organelles that contain digestive proteins that helps in breaking down or degrading foreign materials or antigen. Okay, so now when this vacuole is now formed, it's now go and fuse with the lysosome. And now fusion with lysosomes causes digestion to occur because the lysosome have, they have digestive enzyme. So that is how the cell get rid of unwanted materials. So uh, that's the uh, explanation regarding the uh, passive an active transportation system. So uh, let's, okay, here, in summary, we can see that Active transport, it proceeds against the concentration gradient and it requires input of energy, right? While passive transport proceeds as diffusion from areas of high concentration to area of low concentration and it does not require energy. More explanation on active transport is that it's some proteins that serve as transporter molecules in active transport, which requires uh, the, the protein to now bind to the molecules and transport it. It requires energy in that the process to occur, for the process to occur, energy has to be what? Hydrolyzed. So ATP has to be hydrolyzed to produce the, the now to push the, 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 the process to, to completion. So I think we have discussed and I hope you really enjoy it. And that's where we are going to stop. Thank you for watching. If you are yet to subscribe, kindly subscribe to the channel for more content in the future. Thank you. See you next. Bye-bye.